Welcome to the Holmes Halley E900 video series. My name is Mike and I'll be taking you through the entire process step by step in a series of videos on how to install your new Holmes Halley E900 hardware and springs. In this series, we'll be doing an install of the Holmes E900 hardware start to finish while also discussing what's in the box, how to install the hardware, how to balance the door using the various hardware adjustments, the replaceable components such as the kicker plate and the cantilever arms, the chain placement for the springs, and general maintenance. We'll also be discussing the spring sizes for your particular door. So let's take it right from the beginning and let's get started. Okay, so. First, we want to make sure we got everything in the bag. It comes with the hardware kit. Get these out. And use the chain. Get the hardware lags. A couple things. Not everything in here is going to be usable for every situation. Most doors will already have the handle on it. Don't need that. Most doors will have the hasp. And a little ring, don't need that. Jam bumpers, possible. Pull rope, possible. Bolts for the hasp. And let's get into this little kit right here. Okay, so we've got the oval washers for the black hardware legs. We've got the header bumpers you've got the legs that go on the door attaches the hardware to the door these will keep the hardware from moving side to side so these black ones here go with the rubber header bumpers these spiraled ones go with the handle be using those uh, let's see here. We've got some bolts right here for the hardware. And the jam bumpers, jam stops, jam bumpers, nails for that. It's basically what you got. You can pick and choose different situations on what you need to use and what you don't need. It's very rare unless you have a brand new door, you're building one from scratch, that you're going to use all of this. So today, we're going to end up using the lags, the washers. We don't need these. We might use those. We'll use these if we can. And that should pretty much be it right there. So, as an overview on the springs, if you're going to balance your doors with 728s, uh, you can use the W hook uh, with the P's. You can use the, if, you're, if you have SLs, you overlap them. They provide their own lock by running a bolt through there. If you have a single door that only takes one spring, then you're going to get the C hook for the P spring and that locks it in place. Put the split ring on there. If you have a, uh, if you're going to balance a single door with an SL, all you need is the keeper. Overlap it. You can't get it out off the uh, adjustomatic kicker. Bolt it on there and it basically locks itself in place and on the chain. So you've got three to four different ways to attach the springs. You've got overlapping the SLs. 
W hook with the P's on a two car garage. Single car, you're gonna go with the C and you're gonna go with the safety clip if you're using the SL. Okay, so in the box, you've also got a template here. It's gonna tell you where to drill your holes. Um, the door measurement here, thickness, you got to include the trim in the thickness of the door. This door with the trim measured out at three and a half inches. If I come down here and I'm starting right there, going up three and a half, I'm going to take this first notch and fold that back. And then I'm going to take and I'm going to hang that off the top of the jam and then stretch this out and I'll drill my hole right there my second one right there you can use this template to uh, figure out exactly where your hardware needs to be the uh, manual here will tell you in the box um, what clearances you need to fit a one-piece door tells you the measurements of how far back everything sits, how far out of the, into the, into the driveway everything fits. Um, so read these over. It's going to tell you everything you need to know about the hardware measurements. And this template is what you'll typically use to, uh, to mount the hardware. So the first thing you want to do when you have your hardware down here is you want to loosen up. Just loosen. Don't take them off. But loosen the cantilever arms. Okay, so these should be loose on both. So the first thing you want to do when you're going to do a hardwood job is prop the door up. I've got a stand that I use particularly for this purpose. You can use a two by four. You can use a six foot ladder. The various ways to prop the door open, but just make sure that when you prop it open that it's solid because you're gonna take the springs off at this point. The door's gonna get very heavy and you don't want to crash and back down. So make sure you got it propped up and now we're gonna take the springs off. Taking the springs off can be pretty simple. Grab the spring, pin your elbows to your side, bend your knees, grip the springs, and then simply stand up. If everything cooperates, it'll come right off. Now you're free and clear. Get both sides, and we can lower the door down. No springs, door is going to be very heavy. And occasionally the hardware will break. So it's like, oh my gosh. Wow, that was cool. That's crazy. So what happened here? The kicker just disconnected? No, the, um, or the, the plate. Oh, off right wow. there. yeah, right where the bolt is. So you've still got some of that plate still Jeez. on there. It it held though. It's been there. It's been broken, cracked here for for six months, mm. and it's held on for six months. So it just sits in that little uh, U shape right there. Yeah. So when you're removing the Holmes Howey E900 or any other type of hardware, always grip the two arms right here. This is the only way you can grip it where it won't scissor. Don't put anything in here and here. Grab the cantilever arm and the main arm and hold both of them. And that controls the hardware. Here we go. Remove this side. Okay, now when you got a grip on it like that, the thing can't pivot and it can't pinch you. It's the only way you hold the hardware. 
When we were talking about the template, I measured this door out at three and a half inches. So you fold that back, you start there, you measure up this way, three and a half puts me right here. I'm gonna fold that back. Now, if you look at the jams right here on this particular frame, they go up beyond the header. Now the header is the main beam that holds everything up. The underside of that header beam is where you have to take your measurements. So basically I put a square up against the lower, the bottom edge of the header and I mark it even straight across. I want to measure from up in here anywhere and I want to be even on both sides. I want to take my measurement basically off the same location on both sides. So I've got a mark right there. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to take that line right there. I'm going to put it up to that mark right there bring that down and that's going to tell me where my holes go so roughly i'm about a half an inch below the existing hole so what we're going to do on this is we're going to plug those existing holes and we'll re-drill some new ones where they should be for this e900 hardware so a lot of times when you remove an old set of hardware you don't know whether it was drilled out with the right pilot hole. Could be too big, could be too tight, could be a little splitting. Uh, we're basically trying to clean this area up so that our hardware plate sits flat. And basically what I've done was I've filled the old holes with some dowels and they happen to line up with where we're gonna be at right now. So I got those filled. I'm going to try to flatten this out just a little bit so my hardware is not canting in. I want to pull the door. You can see the scoring on the jam right there where it's done that because of the angle. Um, so I'm going to clean this up and then I'm going to re-drill the holes with the dowels in there and uh, hopefully we'll, be, we'll get a better grip in there. Here you go. Okay, you're rolling? Okay, cool. So basically, <clears throat> long plate right here goes on the door. The main plate, the primary plate, goes on the jam. That lets you know that this is the left side. You can also see the markings on the door, markings on the jam where this plate would sit. Um, realistically, you could probably bolt them up on the wrong side, but you can't bolt them to the door. So pretty tough to mess that up. And also fairly obvious main plate on the jam, long plate on the door. Okay, so let's get this one mounted up there. You know, it's got to feel solid as it's going in. Okay, it felt pretty good, but this impacts a brute, so it doesn't really care. Okay, so I'm not really all the way in with my lag. I'm snug, but I'm not all the way in so that I can still tap it over if I want to make an adjustment. I'm just basically looking to be flush with the jam on uh, top and bottom. Okay. Do this. I'm going to pilot this out at the bottom here.
snug. It looks like it's sitting flat. That's cool. Okay, now. <clears throat> so basically we're sitting here. We're looking pretty square, even with the jam on this side. Mounting it, it felt pretty solid. With this hardware here, I got a spare hole on the back side. We'll show you on the other side. Use that extra lag since this jam was off a little bit, had a little bit of splitting down near the bottom. Anyway, bottom line, they give you this hole up here to brace the hardware with. So we're going to utilize it anytime you got a heavy door. Um, you want to utilize that and brace it. You don't have to use angle. I'm going to use the angle iron. Sometimes I use conduit. Sometimes I use angle iron. Uh, depends what I've got handy, but you know, any kind of extra brace you can get up near the fresh wood in the jam is going to be helpful. So let's mount our hardware brace before we lift the door. Okay. Now, usually go up right in around 20 or so inches. I could go higher, I could go lower. The higher you go, the more strength you're going to get out of it. Uh, I'm going to go to the very top, start a pilot hole in there, and then I'm going to angle the lag slightly down, make it harder for it to pull itself out. Running a pretty long lag. And snug that up. Typically what happens uh, when the jams or the wood gets weak is the top lag will pull out when the door is raising. And the bottom lags can hold, but they're gonna bend the plate. This brace, um, is going to prevent that. All right, so basically what we got to do now is we got to get the door off the ground. The hardware is not attached to the door and the door is resting on the ground. I'm going to pull the door until I butt up against my jam bumpers, okay? And then I'm going to lift the door off the ground. I'm going to stick one of my chisels in there. Probably a good gap would be, you know, maybe a quarter inch or so. Okay, and we're going to do that on both sides. Okay, up off the ground. Now we want to take a look at our gap. Make sure that that's a telltale sign the door is completely crooked as your gap is completely off. But, you know, we're dealing with wood here, so uh, wood warps. Wood sometimes is crooked. So we're going to consider a few factors here. I'm going to kick this door to the right so i got an even gap. Um, hacking away at the bottom of the door kind of throws you off a little bit. Um, I think let me try the hasp on the outside. Kind of line up. And generally speaking, we're there. Okay. I think I'm going to take this side up just a little bit more. This gap is real good though. It's that one there that's off. I'm just going to go up just a hair more. Okay. Now, now we can mount the hardware to the door. Um, let's see here. Yes. Now, 
This is where it comes into play, how I told you earlier to loosen these two up. If these things are tight, when you push that up against the door, that's the way it stays. Now these two bolts being loose from the cantilever arm onto the slider will allow that to sit flat. So basically when you wonder, okay, how do I set my hardware to the door? Well, you get your door where you want it. Make sure you're up against the header. Then make sure you're all the way up against the jam bumper so your door's straight up and down. Push this plate here, the door plate, up against the door so that you're kind of touching the wood all the way down. Now this can all be changed and adjusted later on, but for right now, that's what we want to do. Starting point, get it up there, make sure it's touching the door there, touching the door right there. Okay. And then we're gonna run, uh, we're gonna only gonna run two legs in there for now, top and bottom. If you look at the holes on here, you've got a fixed hole, doesn't leave you much adjustment. You've got an oval there for left to right adjustment. And you've got an oval here, top to bottom. Basically what you're looking at there is options. We like options. So I'm gonna take this. I don't wanna be too far over here. Puts pressure on this, pushing it in. I don't wanna be butt up against the door. It's gonna pull it. So I just wanna slide this arm up against the door and let it relax, see where it wants to sit and then adjust from there. So I'm gonna go in the side to side hole. Let's get that started. Same side to side hole at the bottom. Looks like I've already got a pilot there where the original hardware was. So, let's see how that feels. Okay, that's stripped out. Which is another hole. steps to this tight up against the jam bumper up up against the header with the door it's pretty good and it's free that's when you lock in your cantilever arm bolts okay should be good let me just double check Okay, this side's set up, ready to go. Okay. I'm going to the left of the existing hole because that's what started this whole thing. Still way too far over here. Start smushing the jam over here. Uh, that one is probably a little bit, but I can't go anymore that way. It's just too close to that. So we'll go to that and we'll take the oval to the far side, so I'm more over here. And then I'm just gonna drill this one out to the left of the existing hole.
definitely keep my eye on that. It's there, but let's watch it, see what it does. They're gripped, starts to pull me over. Okay, before I tighten it down, I'm gonna run that lower one too. And now before I tighten that, I'm gonna go to the left of these two and into that center one. But I'm gonna do it with a bigger bit. Once again, just picking that third hole just to give me options here. I'm gonna kick this back a little bit, try going straight. That should help prevent my hardware from bleeding in. Let's go with this one. Okay, before I take it all the way in, tap this up just a hair. Snug that up real good so that it doesn't allow these to pull. Okay, that's good. Okay. Okay, so basically to summarize it, hardware is installed. It's buttoned up. Um, both sides, no springs. Still attached to the arm on the opener. I didn't need to mess with that yet, and I was able to utilize the trolley to lock the door from falling back on me. So all of that's still attached. Still got a little bit of work to do with maybe the truss rods tightening them, but the hardware's installed. Next step is to get the door open and figure out what uh, springs we're gonna use on it. Okay, there's no easy way to do this. Basically, it's just get as many people as you can if you're doing it by yourself and get it up as safely as you can but basically you have to lift a one-piece door with no springs okay here we go one two three four. okay can't do that one Definitely easier with more people, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. So it's time to put the springs on. Here's what we're gonna do. We have to decide what springs we wanna use, um, how heavy the door's gonna be, uh, what ends you wanna use, plug end or lock end springs. We have the plug end right now. Um, labels up. We have to figure the amount of stretch by the looks of the trim on this door. Uh, which is a fair amount of trim. I would still say that the 7 Series 728s will do the job. I just want to make sure I'm not too far out. If the door was of a thicker ply or a thicker trim, 
uh, I would go with a heavier spring and ride closer to the pivot point, put less stress on it. But for now, I think we're pretty good with this door here on going with the 728 plug-in springs. And I'm gonna show you right now how we're gonna to come to the conclusion of where we need to be. It's really simple. Basically, since you're gonna be using the W hook, stick the W hook in the kicker plate. Now you want the sharp edges facing in, so if somebody's walking by, they don't get scratched by that. So, W hook facing in, same thing on the chain. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hang this spring on here. I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna go roughly an inch and a half to two inches of stretch on here. Uh, I find lately that two inches has been working pretty good. So I'm gonna come over here, just kinda, kinda eyeball that to right in around two inches. Okay, so I'm gonna hang, let's see, we got what, five lengths. I'm gonna take a W hook in this link. Chain has a certain pattern where I know I can't go this way. It feels freer like that facing in, otherwise I'd reverse it. I look, okay, that's probably about my two inch stretch. You always want the labels up. So I'm gonna put my springs on there. Clip with the labels out. There, and then we'll put the split ring on it to lock it in place. Now we're ready to go. Facing in, up, doesn't matter which spring you put on first. And it's the same principle as when you take them off. Just basically dip the knees, stand up, put it on the hook. The other one. Okay, now I don't want my spring sticking out in the jam either. You know, I want them basically in. So I can take that, pull it in that way, and that'll assist me in keeping everything lined up straight down. Same thing, a little bit of a stretch on there, cool. Now I'll put the clip on to lock it into place. Okay, and all of that can be easily removed, quickly removed, if I need to readjust or rebalance. We're basically coming down here, uh, nice, clean, straight line all the way up. Nothing to hang yourself up on, no sharp edges. Should be good right there. The rest I'll readjust right up in here as needed, but let me get the other two on first. Which way this thing wants to move. Okay. Yeah, it's probably good, but if I do one more rotation, it kicks it in a little further. Split ring on there to keep it in place. You always want to make sure when the door's all the way open that there's tension on your springs. If there's any slack, and I see that a lot, door will open up, chain goes slack. That means the only reason it's staying up is because the opener's keeping it up. Second you disconnect it, it goes until the chains go tight again. So now we're gonna check the balance of the door. See how it just kind of drifts down a little bit right there. It feels okay up here. That's because it's almost already open. As I start getting down to the about chest high, it starts to wanna start teetering down. Okay, that right there would be a gradual enough fall that I would go with one link on the chain. Um, if I went with a hole on the kicker plate, it would be a drastic adjustment, which we'll show you in a second. So let me prop it back up and drop it. One more link on the chain. Not too hard to pull down. Before you make a judgment call, you always want to close it all the way first so the paint on the spring uh, detaches and frees itself up. Okay, so from the knees down, heavy. From the waist up, feels pretty good. It's not bad. Now, if you look at this door, you've got 
one by, or actually I should say a two by two design. Not crazy, but this adds weight. But this ply is thin. It's got to be three eighths. So thin ply with a design. Uh, let's just guess it at uh, between maybe 200, 250 pounds. Uh, and the 728s will handle that pretty easily. And I've got a lot of adjustability left on the hardware. I haven't even started adjusting that, but it still feels pretty good. Uh, especially if you have an older, weak machine, you got to try to get everything working for that uh, garage door opener as easily as you can. Make it easy on the opener to last longer. So the next adjustment will. Uh, will do is on the kicker plate and that's going to affect the garage door from the knees down. So this here is the adjustomatic kicker. This is where all your adjustments will be. They're fairly big adjustments. If I take this bolt and go down to that hole, that's going to take the door from heavy to springy in one shot. Going down a link on the chain, it's just a very minor adjustment. Now, I'm finding this door to be a little bit heavy from the knees down. So on the adjustomatic kicker, I'm gonna pull the kicker bolt up until it hits the arm a little earlier and that this adjustment right here will make the door balance or even be springy from the knees to the ground where the door is typically the heaviest. I'm just guessing, bringing it up here. Just gonna put a little snug on it. Boom, I'm gonna match it up with the other side. Then I'm gonna work it. And then from the inside, I'll see where it's hitting and see if I gotta go up more or, uh, or down. Now instead of slamming down, it just glides down. I can take it even more, but the opener opens and closes the door from the top. So if you've got that adjusted too far out, even though your opener pins it to the header, that adjustomatic kicker is going to want to pull it out down here. So having it set to where if I let it go, it goes down on its own, but very easy to lift up. Uh, it should be fine. I'm going to bring it down. And here's what we got here. So that's what that bolt does. If you watch that bolt, the arm comes down. The door naturally, when it's at this angle, it feels fine. A little bit beyond this, it's going to start to get a little heavier. It's natural for the door. Um, and then right about there, it hits the bolt right there. And it tweaks it up. And see that little bit of canting right there makes the door springier in a second. So when I let it go, it goes up. But that's basically what the kicker bolt is doing in this adjustomatic kicker plate. So it's taking the weight of the door from the knees down, where the door is probably at its heaviest, and making it much, much easier for either working it by hand or on the opener. And as you go down real slow, you can see where that kicks in, right there. It just tweaks that back and adds a little bit more spring tension. You've got normal when you, when you unbox a set of hardware, that's the hole it's going to be in, normal. If you've got, oh, I would probably say three to five inches of clearance up above you and you have to fit an opener under that number, you could take it into the center hole uh, by undoing the bolt, moving the bolt into that center hole, rebolting it down will cause the door to arc much less. If you had a super low ceiling, a loft, something in the garage that literally gives you an inch and a half of clearance, take it into the far hole 
it will turn this door in an inch, let's just say with bounce, uh, call it an inch and a half. So you can turn a one piece door in an inch and a half of headroom by moving into the farthest hole on your main plate here. Now, there's consequences to that too. Every hole you go over here makes the operation a little bit rougher on the opener. You have to have a very durable opener to take it into that far hole. What happens is, is the door, the, each hole you go in, the door kicks back further first before it rises. By the time you get into this last hole here, the door literally is peeling straight back. At some point, the door has to rise and go up. And when it does that, it puts a lot of shock on the opener. So you gotta have a really good machine uh, to end up in that and have it actually function for any extended period of time. If you're working it by hand, fantastic, no problem. It'll work smooth by hand, uh, but to put that one on an opener there and turn a door that quick, um, got to have a pretty durable opener. Okay, as far as maintenance goes on your Holmes Halley E900 hardware when it's brand new like this, uh, basically uh, nothing. But it's like any other hinge on any other door. If you hear it squeaking, something needs to be lubed. There's five pivot points on a set of hardware that are going to need to be lubed. At some point, they could squeak. You've got one up here off your main arm attaching to the door. One. Number two on your cantilever arm. Both ends. Number three. Number four on your main pivot on the inside. And number five in your adjust-o-matic uh, kicker plate uh, where this bolt runs through. So one, two, three, four, five main pivots on here. You want to spray it up with a spray that's not going to thin out the grease that's in it. So you don't want to use uh, something too thin. Uh, the loop that we use would be goes on like a spray, thickens up like a gel, doesn't drip, doesn't run, um, but of course on a new set of hardware we don't really need to lube it. But don't use anything too thin. You know, the, the when you use something that's, that's not the right viscosity, what's going to happen is the squeak's going to be back next week. Boom, you're going to be greasing it again and again and again until you just stop doing it and that's when uh, squeak turns into a grind and that means something's going to break off and uh, always pay attention for any squeaks in the pivot points. Now as far as safety issues go you don't ever want to stick anything in between this hardware because it's going to be closing. In a second we'll bring it down give you a broad overview of all of the pivot points on here uh, but you know don't stick anything in between here Keep your hands free of everything in this area. Don't forget about your five pivot points that you want to lube. Don't forget about your adjustments right here. Distances, stay away from the springs uh, unless you're actually doing this. Don't play with them. Don't let the kids play with them. There's a warning tag on the plate for a reason. If you don't have to make any adjustments, if it's all working fine, leave it alone. Um, this is basically just as a guide to help you guys to let you know what each component does. Now we'll bring the door down and take a look at the hardware and sometimes it'll give you a good idea of how everything works by just watching what it does. And while you're at it, if you're doing your hinges or your springs or anything else with the door, you might want to get up here 
where the opener attaches. Just make sure everything is tight and snug. You're already here. The opener is going to attach to a one-piece door a little bit different than a sectional wheel. You always want the drive arm extended as long as you can. You want the door bracket on your door as high as you can get it. This was already here and somebody put it in the middle. This particular door bracket doesn't go with this door arm. It went for a different opener. But if this, if I was doing this, this would be all the way up to the top. What that does is that gives you the main thing, the most important thing in this whole operation as far as the opener goes, is that this drive arm is fairly level. The drive arm, when it's attached to the door, can't point down. It wants to push the opener at a downward angle. It has to be at the very least level. It can be pointing upward, that's okay, but it can't be pointing down. Okay, that's probably a little bit too much of an angle right there, but let's uh, get reconnected. Okay, all right, hit it. One piece doors, the opener, it's kind of critical that the opener attaches very close to center. You can be off a little bit. It's not like a sectional door though. You can't go off too much without getting it wobbling. So the closer you are to the center, the better. Lengthen the drive arm and make sure your opener is lubed. So there you have it, start to finish the Holmes E900 Hardware and Springs. My name's Mike from All Pro Quality Garage Doors, as well as Holmes Halley, www.holmeshalley.com. If you have any questions, www.allproqgd.com, and we'll see if we can't answer it for you. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next video.